Natalie Hernandez says, they said that they have some announcements at E3, right? But the fact that Sony is not going to this E3 makes me lose hope for FF7 Remake. It's not, it's not Sony exclusive. They said first on, they said first on PlayStation like five years ago now. Who knows if that's even still true anymore. Just because, like, they, and they could have their own conference, you know? They'd had their own conference this year and showed nothing. Maybe this year they'll have their own conference and show something. You know, let's sit here for a minute and I'll look at chat, right? Let's sit here and relax. Dean Weiss said, Well, Nomura said word was getting out and he feared the remake could get leaked, so he chose to announce it so that it could be official and not leaked. Kind of sad. Yeah, I feel that the prioritization of, of keeping leaks secret, uh, it's kind of dumb. I mean, you want those big <gasps> moments at E3 or whatever, but I really don't care. <laughs> Especially, I mean, think about think about how many rumors there have been about Final Fantasy VII getting remade over the years. Another leak about, oh, they're remaking Final Fantasy VII. Ooh, who cares? <laughs> it would have been it would have been white noise, no matter how many sources said that it was happening. You know what I mean? Natalie Hernandez, I'm really curious about why Nomura didn't direct Final Fantasy XV. Like he was supposed to focus on KH3, then they made him director on Final Fantasy VII remake. Oh, we'll never know all of the details, but I imagine there was a lot of internal office politics on that one. And also just general posturing on from a marketing standpoint of being concerned about Tetsuya Nomura's brand value and the impression of this being a 10-year-long development game. Taking it away from Nomura creates the image of this is a new project unassociated with that project. You can't say that it took 10 years. It wasn't Tabata's fault. Um, it created this this underdog story of of a project of of a of a crappy project being salvaged, right? I don't think that was necessarily their intent, but that was kind of how it worked out for them. With everybody talking about how Mr. Tabata and his team are miracle workers who have saved this game, it created a, a unique impression of Final Fantasy XV going in that I think worked to its advantage um, when it comes to uh, how the public and how critics perceived that game. Every, everything that we know about the 15 development situation and why people were and weren't taken off of projects, I've basically already discussed in the um, uh, in the Final Fantasy 15 Final Fantasy 15 in the marketing campaign of Doom video. The front half of that video is the facts. It's what we know, and then the back half is mostly facts and some me extrapolating outwards, trying to trying to approximate what happened behind the scenes. But um. For the most part, if you want to know more of what I think about the number of being taken off of 15, the Final Fantasy 15 and the marketing campaign of Doom video is an accurate summation of my feelings on the matter and also what we know about the matter. We don't really have a ton of new information on that front. Ah, let's see. Well, Jordan Cambra, um, so Jordan Cambra says, uh, I heard that Nomura had a lot of ideas for 15, and apparently when Tabata came in, he said the team was exhausted. This is all paraphrasing and just theories. You need to look at it this way. This is the thing that you have to keep in mind. The emotional toll involved in what I am about to outline for you, okay? You are Mr. Tetsuya Nomura, and, and... Collectively, Mr. Tetsuya Nomura and his crack team of developers, he gets a staff of people together to work on Kingdom Hearts 1, right? Some of those people wind up working on Chain of Memories, some of them. But pretty much all of them and some new people go on to work on Kingdom Hearts 2. Kingdom Hearts 1 started development around 2000, like early 2000, right? I want to say it started like January or February of 2000 was when they started actual production on the game. After some pre-production, obviously. Kingdom Hearts 2 comes out... You know, 2005, 2006. Um, that means that you are working in close proximity with the same people across six years. Uh, this builds a certain amount of workplace camaraderie and loyalty, I would imagine. People who like working together and feel comfortable working together. 2006, Tetsuya Nomura takes his entire staff, everyone, to go and work on Versus 13, including people who left Kingdom Hearts 1, who weren't working on Kingdom Hearts 2, folks like Jun Akiyama, who left to work on Final Fantasy XII, right? And other games. He gets everyone. That every single son of a gun that Tetsuya Yunamura has ever worked with is credited on Versus 13 in those early trailers, right? Every single key person that he worked with. And we can assume, by extension, the vast majority of the development staff, right? In terms of how, you know, business teams and development teams move around within companies, it would probably be all of his people. 
and Kingdom Hearts is essentially outsourced to Osaka, even though it's internal at the company. It is essentially, at this point, outsourced. And then Coded and Days are lit are quite literally outsourced. Um, not only does is Days outsourced to another company, um, Coded is so outsourced that it is outsourced to another company and another director within Square Enix, because Hajime Tabata is a co-director on Coded. It wasn't even developed within Square, but it has another Square Enix co-director, because Nomura outsourced it to someone else, even though they were outsourcing it. It's, it's, nah. But anyway, the point is, hey, think about it, again, think about it from the emotional perspective. You and all of your game development buddies who have been working together for six years leave to go and work on your bold, M-rated, brand-altering passion project, right? You go to work on that, and almost immediately discover, as soon as development is supposed to start in any capacity, that Crystal Tools is a disaster and does not work properly. Again, as I discussed in the Final Fantasy XV in the Marketing Campaign of Doom video, to the point that there were times where the Final Fantasy XIII team developed assets for the game across the course of, like, two weeks, and then went to try and implement them into the engine and found out, oops, these files don't work, and we have to scrap them. So, v Versus 13 and Final Fantasy 14 both essentially get put on indefinite hold, and what now begins is a mixture of two things. A bunch of key creative staff, who are all best buddies jazzed about working on their next thing, sitting around and twiddling their thumbs, with no real capital or resources to actually move forward with development of the game, so all they can do is come up with exciting new- they're essentially just more pre-production. Let's just plan more. That's all we can do for, like, from 2006 onward, essentially, that's all they're really doing. And making trailers, which are outsourced to, like, the cinema department of the, of the company. Or the visual works, or where there's some division of their company that handles that stuff. Occasionally, people just get snatched off of that team, out of that group of people entirely because, hey, Crystal Tools and Final Fantasy XIII are a mess. We need help. John Akiyama, who was a writer and cinematographer, uh, event director on Kingdom Hearts 1, uh, writer and event director on Final Fantasy XII, uh, event director on Vagrant Story, uh, I believe- I think he was involved on Tactics in some way. Jun Akiyama was involved on a bunch of projects either as a writer or as a, like, scene director. Let me- let me read off to you Jun Akiyama's credits. I think this will reveal where the problem comes from, right? Dynama Tracer for the Super Famicom, Event Design, Final Fantasy VII, Event Planner, Snowboard Minigame Planner, Final Fantasy Tactics, Event Planner, Vagrant Story, Event Planner, Kingdom Hearts, Event Planning Director, Scenario Writer, Final Fantasy Tactics Advance, Event Script Editor, Kingdom Hearts 2, Special Thanks, because he's too busy on Final Fantasy XII being Event Direction. And even though he's not credited as a writer, if you actually, like, read behind-the-scenes documents about Final Fantasy XII, after the first director of, of XII left, John Akiyama basically got a Battlefield promotion and was, um, and was helping uh, Daisuke Watanabe, like, write more content for the game that ultimately had to be cut. Uh, well, some of it got cut. I shouldn't say... I shouldn't... I'm looking specifically at, right at the Wikipedia page, which is that a lot of the stuff that they came up with had to be cut in order to finish the game on time. So this this is Jun Akiyama, right? This is who he is. This is you now. It's event event design, event planner, event scripting director, event planning director, scenario. This this is his wheelhouse, right? So international zodiac job system, Final Fantasy XII event direction, because it's all the same events from XII. Final Fantasy Tactics A2 Grimoire of the Rift. Special thanks. Oh, you know he worked on the previous two tactics games, so maybe he you know helped them out at some point with that. I don't know. What's his next credit after after all of that? Final Fantasy XIII Crystal Tools Development Staff. But actually, there's another credit. There's another credit that he has. It's not here, but he has another credit. Do you know what it is? His name shows up in the Versus Thirteen trailers. So he and everybody else sat around from 2006 to 2009, either A, 
doing a lot of thinking, or B, helping with a game that they weren't involved on because they were told to. A writer and a director is somehow development staff on a game engine. Huh. Interesting. Anyway, so after Final Fantasy XIII is done in, in 2009, right? Okay, now finally, Crystal Tools is finished. We can actually start working on the game. So they start working on the game finally. But everybody's already been working on it for three years. I'd be pretty emotionally exhausted by that point. And also, I imagine they're still probably trying... Crystal Tools is still a bad engine. It's still a... It, I mean, it has not become... It has not magically become a good engine just because 13 is finished. It was cobbled together just enough to make 13 run. Which you then observe when Final Fantasy XIV, which came out, used Crystal Tools and is a complete disaster. Because they just scrambled to get Crystal Tools running just enough to release Final Fantasy XIII, right? You know, since we're just sitting here talking, even though we're probably going to be done relatively soon, I'll flip on my webcam. Oh wow, it's real dark. I'll fix that. Yeah, so now, so we have a scenario where we see the next game that's made by Crystal... Final Fantasy XIII, love it or hate it, is one of the most polished AAA games ever released. It is immaculately well produced, for, if nothing else, right? It, all the animations look great, it runs pretty well, great art... You know, I don't know, may not... I, regardless of art direction or direction of, of cutscenes, how good the combat was, whatever, it runs... Well, it looks good. It is well produced. There is money on display. It does its job. It is functional, right? Final Fantasy XIV is the exact same engine. It is a technical disaster. Nothing works right. Nothing runs correctly. Everything is just completely in shambles, right? So much so that they have to completely destroy the game and start over from scratch. You, the audience, probably know how Final Fantasy XIII plays. It's a pseudo-turn-based game where the allies and enemies are both kind of on AI routines, and you just manipulate their AI routines. There's like a static camera angle up here, and you hit buttons, and the characters do animations, and numbers show up, whatever, yeah, yeah. Final Fantasy XIV is, you know, a tab, you know, is, is your macro-based, you know, MMO. You got a bunch of different actions that you, you know, you, you flip through. You wander around big fields. You, you navigate bad menus. All that kind of stuff. Versus 13 was going to be a bigger, more complicated Kingdom Hearts 2. And Crystal Tools kind of ran a linear walk-forward, can barely even jump, let the computer do everything for you turn-based combat game. And then apparently it had no power to handle an MMO. So like... How is Crystal Tools ever going to run a Kingdom Hearts 2 in, like... I, you know, it was going to run a King... It was running Kingdom Hearts 3, essentially. You know? A more sophisticated version of that of that type of game. How was it ever... How was it ever... Going to run such a project, I ask you. So, finally. Hey, let's... We can finally get to work on... We can finally get to work on uh, Versus 13 after all of these years, right? Oh no! This engine is literally on fire. And we're all already emotionally and physically exhausted. And probably worried about our jobs at this point. Because we haven't done anything for three years. People who don't do anything for three years usually get fired. And now you've just been in this constant state of pre-production planning for years. You have a director who is now probably very fed up with this whole situation of, you know, somebody else's projects taking precedence over his and just continually getting shuffled around between, okay, I kind of want to make this Birth by Sleep thing, but on the side while I'm busy with something else. But hey, Nintendo wants a DS game. Okay, fine, I guess I'll also write a DS game. Okay, but also Disney wants a cell phone game. I guess I'll get drunk and write a DS a cell phone game. Nobody's happy, nobody's enthusiastic by the time the 13 is done, and and you can get to work, right? So, f they're working on it, it's probably going very poorly, but I don't know that, that's just hearsay. 2012 rolls around, development kits 
for Xbox One and PS4 arrive, and you're a Square Enix executive, and you're like, this game started production in 2006, and it's barely running, and they've got like less than a quarter of the game finished. Now, as far as I am concerned, as Jacob, looking at this Square Enix executive, that's your fault! But I am now resuming the role of Japanese uh, Square Enix executive. It's not my fault. Uh, it just kind of happened. Just, just, these things just happen, right? Who, 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 who can tell what will happen when we decide to develop a completely new next-generation game engine uh, for three completely different types of games simultaneously? You never know what'll happen. These are just risks that you take when you're in the video game development industry. Um, so from there, you, uh, Joshua just flipped on a light, so I guess we don't need this. Mm. We'll knock that down a little bit. So from there, you say to yourself, well, might as well just make this a, our big PS4 game. I mean, we've already got all the pre-production done on it, and the engine isn't working well anyway, so we'll just make it a new game, and we'll start another engine from the ground up for this game. What could possibly go wrong? Could possibly go wrong? Nothing. Nothing could go wrong. Because it's self-correcting, nothing, nothing can go wrong. Nothing, nothing can, can go wrong. wrong. Nothing can go wrong. <sighs> so, by the time you get to 2014, this project has taken a long time, and uh, even though Kingdom Hearts 3 is now in development, uh, two things happen. Number one, somebody at the top realizes, hey, by developing Luminous and Final Fantasy 15 and Kingdom Hearts 3 for it at the same time, Aren't we replicating the situation that destroyed us last generation? Hmm, perhaps we should try something different. Maybe I should do something a little different. Um, so they did something a little bit different, and they changed Kingdom Hearts 3 over to Unreal 4, which caused that team to lose a year of work. But these things happen. These are just, these are just expenses that you eat in the video game industry. And you also say to yourself, well, Mr. Nomura uh, didn't get this game anywhere with, you know, six years of development time. Uh, and the Kingdom Hearts franchise, you look at those sales numbers, they're going down. Just keep on going down. We go from the DS, an incredibly popular and successful handheld, to the PSP, which is popular and successful, but not nearly as much as the DS or the PlayStation 2. And then we go to Coded, which never releases outside Japan, and by the time that it releases on the DS in the States, nobody cares about the Nintendo DS or Kingdom Hearts anymore. And then they release a game called Dream Drop Distance, and even though the 3DS has lots of units sold, it's a game called Dream Drop Distance. So the curve very consistently looks like this, with a slight upward tick for Dream Drop because it's on 3DS. So you're a Japanese businessman, you look at the chart and you say, chart says going down. Clearly, the problem is that Tetsuya Nomura has not made Kingdom Hearts 3 and is splitting his focus between multiple projects, and this is fine, because clearly he doesn't know what he's doing with this Versus 13 thing anyway. And so you take him off of Versus Final Fantasy 15, and you put him back on Kingdom Hearts 3. After Tetsuya Nomura has now spent, uh, let's see, from 2006 to 2014. Hmm. I suppose that would be about eight years. Eight years?! working on his weird passion project, three of which were spent doing nothing, the next three of which were spent working on a crappy engine that is barely running, and then you were told to delete, and then you spend another three years, and they say, you're off the project. And then about a year later, you find out, because of a rough cut of a trailer that airs internally at the company, that you're also directing the Final Fantasy VII remake and no one told you. Suddenly, some of the, uh, the anger and the frustration and the, uh, seeming complete lack of interest that we see in Kingdom Hearts 3, some of the complete lack of interest and absolute loathing for the material that he's working with and the 
the anger and the desire to be doing something else, anything else. What I'm saying is, to use Joey's words, Tetsuya Nomura is, is the sympathetic villain of this story. <sighs> I've said this, uh, I kept it vague on Twitter, but I mentioned something about Tetsuya Nomura did not want to make Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh... I'll talk about that more another time, but you kind of have the basis of it now. I'd be, uh... I'd be upset. Quite frankly, I would quit if I was him. If I had d if this has happened to me, I'd quit. The only reason that I wouldn't quit which is exactly what is happening, is if, through some inexplicable miracle, the company was also still giving me infinite money to remake Final Fantasy VII and to just keep doing whatever the hell I want with Kingdom Hearts as long as it fits within the Walt Disney Company's branding guidelines. And while the Walt Disney Company, you know might have hard line on, um, uh, you know, blood and gore and cursing and sexual content. You know what they don't care about? Weird shit. If we just put a lot of weird stuff in this game, I can do whatever I want, and nobody will care, because what does Disney care about? Just a bunch of weird things happening. Camille says it's like watching and understanding a train wreck. Yes, this is this is why I'm insane, and why I just I care too much about things. I have to understand stuff like this, things that don't matter and that nobody else cares about, and that I probably still don't understand because I don't have enough information. I'm reducing like you know 15 years of hist. Uh, I'm reducing 15 years of many people's lives and a bunch of internal corporate secrets to a discussion that I can sum up in about 20 minutes. That's all hearsay. Who knows if any of it's real. Just my own attempt to rationalize these crazy things that I do not understand. Or didn't understand, and I think that I do. It makes me a little bit less nervous to feel that I have some understanding of how the world functions. <laughs> I think I should be clear after that discussion as well, because it may not be clear. I actually have a lot of respect for Tetsuya Nomura. Like, legitimately. He's made a lot- he's made a lot of projects that I really like, and I respect his artistic vision. I think he must be pretty smart if he keeps getting work, and he's made several things that were pretty good and that I really enjoy. Um, I just also think that he's now stuck on some projects that he is not personally interested in anymore, so... We're winding up with kind of derivative, weaker versions of his earlier projects. But I, I suspect that I actually like Tetsuya Nomura a lot more than... Other people do. Again, part of what I talk about in that in that uh, Final Fantasy 15 in the marketing campaign of Doom video is that it seems like people really have like this bad impression of, of him and what his deal is that I don't think that I that I do not think is fair. Anyway, uh, since the camera is not always cooperative, let's just go ahead and use this to look at this freaking area. What is going on here? Speaking of Kingdom Hearts and Tetsuya Nomura's artistic vision, this kind of reminds me of Hollow Bastion, actually. The water's frozen as opposed to flowing up, but it's kind of similar.